So I've digested this fat stinky burrito that is this 5 hour long congressional hearing and I'm here to present you my doo-doo on a silver platter to talk about this circus show. Essentially the whole thing did nothing other than to make the CEO of TikTok look like a Tibetan monk with ultra level patience to deal with this whole congressional hearing. Yeah it's a complete shit show. For those of you who don't know what's going on, TikTok's 40 year old Singaporean CEO Sho Chu was grilled in a 5 hour long congressional hearing about potentially banning TikTok in the US as a data privacy security measure. In other words, they wanted to know if China could spy on the US using TikTok, so they are discussing a ban or not. But good golly gee, what a pain in the ass it was to watch at the hearing, not because of how long it was, but because of how stupid and brain dead the questions asked in the hearing were. I felt like I was watching a satirical comedy about tech illiterate dinosaurs finding out about technology and social media for the very first time. Like, hey Mr. TikTok, if I delete the cookies on my browser, will my computer get hungry? And it wasn't really a discussion to resolve the issue at hand, or at least a debate, you know, it was more like a public execution of a Chinese CEO of a big tech company. Like the questions didn't make sense, and it's so fucking stupid and clearly asked from people who don't understand the tech or social media at all. You have regular contact with Chinese Communist Party Secretary, Mr. Zhang Fuping, who is your boss at ByteDance, correct? No. No. No, no. He's neither my boss nor do we have frequent contact. But you have regular contact with ByteDance. Uh, with the CEO of ByteDance. TikTok and ByteDance share legal teams. You confirmed this, correct? Our general counsel is yes. uh, an American yes no. uh, lawyer. Yes. Of oh. She's not even giving him a chance to answer. <laughs> It's so fucking stupid. Also, my mm. colleague Representative Lada confirmed that your parent company, ByteDance, currently can access user data. Yes? We have to be yes. more specific. Um, yes. After you Project Texas? That. No. I'm not asking after Project Texas, I'm asking now. Yes. Yes. Mr. Chu, yes or no? How closely tied is TikTok to the CCP? Yes or no? Well, Congresswoman, oh yes, three of our board members. Y yes, yes, are from the US. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Our general counsel is yes. uh, an American yes no. uh, lawyer. Yes. Know. It's so fucking ridiculous. She's so rude and arrogant. And I don't know, shouldn't this be a discussion instead of a one-sided barrage? Yes. Mr. Chu didn't even have a chance to speak or to say his piece. Yes or no, my dance is required to have a member of the Chinese government on its board with veto power. Is that correct? No, that is not correct. ByteDance owns some Chinese businesses and you're talking about this very special subsidiary that is for Chinese business licensing. So I'm gonna have to move on. What the fuck? <sighs> this is a circus show, like I said. When Mr. Chu tries to explain his point and it doesn't concur or go with what she's trying to say, she just say, let's move on to the next point. <laughs> It is so fucking ridiculous. Clearly, they are just trying to paint TikTok as an evil entity and not wanting to hear TikTok's side. So what the fuck is the point of a committee when judgment has already been passed? Why did an internal memo from TikTok corporate headquarters- Oh great, she has her little cutout board. Is this a school presentation? Wow. If you had nothing to hide, would you need to downplay the association with ByteDance in China? You know I hate it when she does this face. Hmm? Why Mr. Chu? Why do you have to downplay China's association? Why Mr. Chu? Why? Give me an answer. And when Mr. Chu gives an answer, okay, let's move on. <laughs> God. I have not seen you this can't. Level. You can't oh, answer that question. Ms. There we go. Right when he answers, she just speaks right over him. This is fucking ridiculous. Your attention to the screen for a short video if you don't mind. What the fuck is this? She goes on to show a TikTok shit post trying to assert her point and then she pulls out one of her little bots for her class presentation. But yeah, this clip is one that really grinded my gears. I mean, she didn't even give Mr. Chu time to respond and god damn that fucking face. Why Mr. Chu? Hmm, yeah, okay. She's so rude and arrogant and instead of a discussion, she's simply casting aspersions. She already has a point in her head and she just loves hearing herself speak. And 
she pulled out a shit post from TikTok to try to make her point that completely fell flat. And I guarantee everyone in the room was like, was that a 3D mock-up of a gun? What, what the fuck is that? She's really not here to hear what the CEO of TikTok has to say. In her eyes, he is the enemy and must be put down. And it's the same for the other politicians that are speaking here in this congressional hearing. Clearly, she's not interested in receiving any answers from him. So this whole segment, it's fucking worthless. Nothing is moving forward. We are not learning anything new about TikTok. It's not a discussion. She's not opening up the conversation to clarify things. Like I said, nothing is moving forward. This is not a discussion. It is a public execution. I know you know about the poking challenge. So he's bringing up a point about the choking challenge on TikTok where people would choke themselves to the point of unconsciousness. Or in some cases, tragically death. Mr. Chu, please, your technology is literally leading to death. Mr. Chu, yes or no? Here we go, yes or no, again. Uh, Congressman, I would just like to, if respectfully you don't mind, I would just like to start by saying it's devastating to hear about the news of yes, as a yes. father myself. This is Sir, yes or no? I'll repeat the Yes question. or no, Mr. Chu, it's simple. Yes or no? Just answer yes or no on this very complex and intricate question. Yes or no? Yes or no, please. Congressman, we do take these issues very yeah, seriously. Yeah, yes or no? And we do provide resources for anyone who types in anything that... Sir, Susan yes or no? I see you're not willing to answer the question. So he's bringing up TikTok challenges, right, and, and how they are dangerous and some even leading to deaths. Is an app fully responsible for everything that happens to every user on the platform? You know, it's like, say your daughter bought a new PC that came installed with Google Chrome and then she became a porn addict because now she can watch her favourite Futanari porn in full HD and now she can't stop flicking her pink bean till one day she dies of overstimulation of her happy button. Is that Google Chrome's fault? And also, these challenge type content isn't native to TikTok. Remember the planking challenge? Some people were planking on train tracks. Some even planking on precariously high spots that were very dangerous. Or even the Tide Pod challenge where people ate those little detergent pods. That challenge originated from Twitter and Tumblr. So it's not like TikTok invented challenge type videos. TikTok wasn't even around during the planking or the Tide Pod challenge. I'm not saying that the content on TikTok is perfect. In fact, it's far from perfect. I rarely even go on TikTok because I just think that the content there is just full of brain rot content. You know, you can mindlessly scroll through TikTok for hours on end. But isn't it unfair to have social media companies bearing all the responsibility of every bad thing that happens on the app? Like, is Google Chrome responsible for someone's daughter's porn addiction? Are car makers responsible for car-related accidents all around the world? Which app developer can ever ensure 100% assurance against misuse? It's ridiculous. You know, I guess TikTok is only safe when it is fully owned owned by the US, which I'm pretty sure is what they're pushing for here. Either a total ban of TikTok in the US or forcing China to sell TikTok to the US so that they could spy on their own citizens instead of China. <laughs> it's fucking lunacy. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? What? Yeah, look at Mr. Chu's face. <laughs> He's like, the fuck did you ask? No, Mr. Congressman. TikTok does not need Wi-Fi. You can even access it on the moon. It will just magically run on its own without the internet. Please, the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, I may not understand that. So if I have a TikTok app on my phone and my phone is on my home Wi-Fi network, does TikTok access that network? It will have to, to access the network to get connections to the internet, if that's the question. Is it possible then that it could access other devices on that home Wi-Fi network? We do not do anything that is beyond any industry norms. I think what he's trying to get at is whether TikTok will be able to spy or access data from other devices that are connected to the same Wi-Fi network that TikTok is connected to. But it's the way he asked the question, Does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? That made him sound like a fucking fossil that doesn't understand anything about how the internet works. And that basically sums up all the questions that were asked. Yeah, I think that's what he's trying to get at because it is a known thing that apps can access other devices, right? It can detect other devices on the same network. Like Facebook or Google, for example, they are able to send you targeted personalized advertisements on all your devices on the same network. But wow. Spectacular question from a congressman from the most powerful country in the world.
Next, he's gonna ask if Siri can turn his iPhone into a PS5. But on the issue of data security, something interesting known as Project Texas was brought up during this congressional hearing, which is a very clever name, by the way, Project Texas. Essentially, Project Texas is TikTok's way of appeasing the US government. It is a project to put all of TikTok's US citizens' user data on US soil, as opposed to anywhere else on the world, so that the US could monitor its own user data instead of other countries. And this data would be overseen by Oracle, which, by the way, Oracle, the company, openly sells user data to other companies, along with many other companies that sell its users' data, you know, including Facebook, Google, PayPal. It's just everyday business that's been going on for years. Like I said, Facebook and Google, they are one of the biggest sellers of user data, and they sell user data to advertisers to send us personalized ads. So what's stopping China from buying user data from other third-party data brokers. It's just that TikTok is not US-owned and the US Congress doesn't like that because now China has a direct way of accessing US citizens' user data through TikTok. If you're banning one entity from accessing our data, why not ban all entities from accessing our data? You know, I don't want anyone, I don't want any government body accessing my data, whether China, US or any other country, and exploiting it either for surveillance or to send me shitty advertisements. But um, yeah, I'm digressing. To sum it up, the entire hearing was just a complete waste of everyone's time. No real questions were answered, no progress was made, and it did nothing except allow these people in the US Congress to masturbate to the sound of their own voice. Yes.